Okay guys, I know it's been so long since I made my last video, but uh, I've just been dealing with all this personal stuff around my house. Uh, and if I went into all the detail about it, I would start to cry. Not the least, not the reason, the least of which would be because it's just so boring and mundane, but something that had to be done. Uh, so anyway, um, but I have so many videos I want to make and so many ideas for videos that I want to make and so much documentation that fret not, I definitely will be making more in the future. Um, but tonight I just wanted to give you a video with some little odds and ends and observations that I've had over the last couple days. Um, so as you can see in this video, it's a guy dancing in his underwear and... <laughs> I don't know if you guys recognize the sitcom. Um, this is Niles the Butler on The Nanny. While in quarantine, I've discovered that I get cozy TV, so they run all these cheesy sitcoms, but a lot of them are fun to watch, you know, especially if you don't have anything else to do. But this guy is imitating Tom Cruise. So here he just looks like he's singing. Here he just looks like he's going into a psychedelic trance from the 60s. We don't know what's going on there. This is Niles the butler from The Nanny, and um, he's British and very upper crust, so it's very surprising to see him doing this. But anyway, if you'll notice here, this is obviously a nod to Risky Business, and he is wearing, um, oh my god, I forgot the name for them. I keep wanting to say tidy whities and that's not what they are. They're the, they're the baggy bloomers, uh, the ones that keep your procreative, uh, your procreative capabilities in check. Um, but anyway, obviously, as we all know, this is not anymore how Tom Cruise was in the original video. We got the white shirt, the white jobbies, the white baggy bloomer jobbies. I can't. Boxers. That's thank you. Oh my God. You don't even understand. I've been working so much and doing so many things and I haven't been talking to people. So I feel like I'm forgetting how to talk to people and I'm forgetting my words. But anyway, so he's got the boxers on and it's all in white. And of course now here we see just everything is just lovely pink. We can barely tell that Tom Cruise is wearing underwear. Of course, that's the nature of the movie. Now the nanny is kind of more of a kid friendly show. Knock on wood, kid friendly. But I could have sworn I saw somebody wearing a Speedo on there and they could have put a Speedo on this guy. But I mean, so maybe they did it to be more decent because he is British and upper crust but doubtful. Actually, I think him wearing tidy whities might have been funnier. But anyway, actually, we don't know what color Tom Cruise's underwear is. <laughs> it could be all but flesh colored. And also, too, I don't know what he's holding there. It looks like a bong. It looks like a psychedelic colored bong. And Tom Cruise is obviously carrying a candlestick. So Tom Cruise is the more tame of the two and what he's using is a microphone, um, but not in his pant choice or non-pant choice. Anyway, so there he's singing... There he looks like he's marching in some kind of parade. Um, there he looks like he's giving some kind of creepy salute, <laughs> which is kind of funny, but also not funny. But, and there Tom Cruise is laughing about it. Um, I actually found an interview on YouTube where Tom Cruise is like, oh yeah, you know, I basically, like I was rehearsing it. And then I got my socks to the right amount of slippage. So I would come out in the very beginning to like right the middle of the screen. Like he figured it all out, like physics. I don't know if it's quantum physics. Some kind of physics is going on here because his underwear choice are not the same as even a sitcom from the 90s. So I thought that was a really interesting reality residue. And we still don't see the pants. Although I do remember when he went down on the couch. Obviously when he was flailing around on the couch, you definitely saw he was wearing underwear. I'm pretty sure they were white, though I have not seen Risky Business in a while. So that's the nanny and... Yeah, so that's the nanny and Niles the butler. But speaking of Niles, I also get Frasier. Frasier's another show that they show on TV. So the other night I was watching the news and I saw this view that reminded me so much of Frasier Crane's original view the way that I remember it, which was the Space Needle all the way over on the left-hand side of the screen. And as you can see, the city's way far away, and there's the exotic mask. Um, so that's sort of a litmus test as to where, as to where in relation to in the within the window, that the space needle should be, 
at least depending on which which version of reality or which timeline we are in. So anyway, this is a picture from a Thrillist article, and it's the only picture of the way, well, until now, it's the only picture of the way that I remember Fraser Crane's apartment view as having been. And it was just very far back. The city was all very far back. Um, the Space Needle, you can see the entire Space Needle. It's all the way to the far left side of the screen. And forgive me, I know some of you guys who have been with me for a long while probably have seen me just probably have seen me examine this before, but for those of you who are new or for those of you who forgot I did this, I still find it absolutely fascinating. So when I was watching the news, I was reminded of this because I think I was looking, I was watching the convention and obviously there is a view like this. Now I know in Thrillist magazine, they were saying that there is no view within the city of Seattle that would have this kind of view and it used this picture. But, in watching the sitcom, look how close the city is. And there's the mask. And right here is the ladder. It's the legs of the Space Needle. You can't really tell, but I have some more pictures. Okay, so right here, again, it's the dining room table. So you see there's the mask. There's the mask here, relative to that. And then there's the legs right there. And it's weird, because again... In a sitcom, in the sitcom world, you want to establish where you are really, really quickly. So it would be in their best interest to have the full length of the Space Needle showing. But in this new version, only the legs are showing. You can't even see the top. Not in most scenes anyway. I mean, you'd have to pull really, really far back with a camera. So it just makes no sense that, see, and there's the legs right there. And half the time they're obscured by the door. They're obscured by the sliding, or not really sliding, but the patio door, the door jams are obscured by that. So it makes no sense because we can't even see it. It's like, why put the Space Needle in there? But all the while, this is the new, when I was watching it in the 90s on TV, this is exactly what it looks like. But when I started rewatching it again in like around 20, I would say probably 2016, I didn't, I noticed it and I didn't notice it right away because I was so, I was exercising so much cognitive dissonance to just brush it off. And then I thought to myself and I opened my mind up, boy, this could be a Mandela effect. So there was that. And then, oh, and then the Today Show did something. Is This is what Fraser's, Fraser Crane's apartment would look like today. See, and the Space Needle's all the way over to the left-hand side of the screen. And then there's another thing on Pinterest. I'd love to have this view. Only Dr. Fraser Crane has this view. I think that's what she said on Pinterest. And it's all the way over to the right of the screen. And then there's another one with him playing piano. And there's the mask. And there are the legs. And you can see now the camera's pulled back much farther here. But we barely ever see that on the actual show. Because I have the whole DVD set on box set. And you can't see it. So... I don't know, this whole thing is so weird to me, but the weirdest thing is, is that now, oh wait, now when I go to the Thrillist magazine article, the pictures have been taken away. So right here, there used to be at the top of the page, oh crap, <laughs> there used to be at the top of the page, that picture of Fraser Crane's apartment with the space needle all the way over to the left-hand side of the screen. Like so, and it is not there. And you know, actually, when the space needle disappeared, when all the pictures disappeared, the inside Fraser Crane's Plush Seattle Digs article from Thrillist, it's my go-to article that I've always used for that picture of reality residue, the one, one of the few reality, re reality residue pictures. Um all these pictures disappeared the weekend that everybody was predicting i think it was in october that there was going to be some horrific thing at some horrific like terrorist event at a seattle football game which is so weird and i thought maybe it was just a glitch at the time but they never came back the pictures never came back it's almost as though they're trying to wipe out that reality in a cyber sort of in a cyberific kind of way it's really really weird so another weird thing I wanted to do 
is go in and look at when the Fraser Crane apartment article as to what it would look like today when that was published because we're looking for significant dates or when the changeover might have occurred. Now, I discovered Fraser Crane's apartment Space Needle moving probably around 2017, early 2018. So this article with the perceived reality residue, I mean, it's certainly not where the Space Needle was on the set in the categories, <laughs> sorry. Um, was published September 11th, 2018. Now, of course, I don't know much about 2018. I know many of us fell into the Mandela effect in 2016, but September 11th is itself, is in itself a portal date for obvious reasons. And it also deals with a big landmark. Now, of course, this is the Seattle landmark. It's only one tower, <laughs> unless you count the UFO top. Fraser Crane's apartment redesigned for 2018. So they go into the patterns, but look at that. The Space Needle's all the way over to the left-hand side of the screen. Now, granted, it seems a little bit closer, but let's see. A little bit. It's just really interesting. I'll let you guys decide. And then we go down here. It seems a little more smooshed in. You can't tell as well. But anyway, I just thought that was really interesting. And again, a portal date, September 11th. Kind of like my, uh, <laughs> kind of like when I was watching Melrose Place. See, you can find out so many things when you go back and watch TV shows. I went back and I watched Melrose Place, and the episode where the apartment building exploded, and it was all just, there was one side of it that was unlivable, kind of like the Pentagon. It reminded me, when I went back and watched it after 9 11, it reminded me of the Pentagon um, at it just reminded me of the Pentagon and how like one side was totally unexploded. And of course, Donald Rumsfeld wasn't in that side of the Pentagon. Well, actually it's got five sides, but who's counting? So anyway, it was in the side that, no wait, Amanda, I think it was Amanda's side was fine and she's kind of the villain anyway. And so was Donald Rumsfeld. But I looked at the air date when it originally aired the explosion of the apartment building and it was September 11th like 1995 or something it was so weird so again September 11th the weird portal date albeit a little morbid and morose but I just thought it was interesting and last but not least la pièce de résistance oh my gosh this is so funny when you're doing a remodel of your apartment of sorts and you're cleaning things out you find a lot of stuff and I found my autograph poster of Mark Hamill. Oh my God, so cool. So he was working on this video game. It's one of the first interactive video games at this place called Renmar Studios where I was acting as a receptionist. Now Renmar Studios is really cool because they originally, originally filmed I Love Lucy and the Golden Girls there and that kind of thing. And um, there's actually a basketball hoop outside. One of my friend's grandfathers used to own it. It's not, it's, I think it's called Red Studios now. They're not filming anything, of course, there now. But there was a basketball hoop outside one of the sound stages. And as we were leaving work one day, I asked my friend, I go, so did B. Arthur and Betty White go out and shoot hoops when they were between breaks from shooting the Golden Girls? <laughs> between takes? And like, she just started laughing. But anyway, I remember going there one day to work and I was just doing reception work there. And I saw Mark Hamill, like, sitting there talking to this guy. And, like, very up on current events. Like, he had his newspaper on his lap. This is, like, in 1995. He had his newspaper on his lap. He was just yak, 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 and wait. He's a very chatty person. You can just tell. I mean, obviously, because he chats a lot. Like, every time I saw him, he was just chatting, chatting, chatting. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. So he was shooting this video game called Wing Commander. Oh, I guess it's three. And so I was like oh wow that'd be so cool if I got to meet Mark Hamill and I was going through it's like I was going through one of those weeks where I had the self-confidence up my self-confidence up and good things were happening so there's this woman actually she turned out to be one of my friend's friends I didn't know her that well but she's like oh yeah yeah we'll see if we can get you on the set so she comes in and like she goes on your next break on your lunch break come and find me just come to soundstage whatever number and I'll take you in to meet Mark. And I'm like, okay, cool. And, or no, I think it was, see, this is back in 1995. I think she said that when they were on a break, she would call me and I should come over. That's what it was. I think her name was Leanne. Oh my God. So she's like, come over, you know, I'll introduce you to Mark. So 
she called me they were on a break I went over really quickly and I my confidence was up because I was having a good week so we just chatted a little bit and you could tell the director and producer whoever the hell was there I think it was a director at least they're like they jeez, I got a helicopter going we got somebody like slamming the toilet seat down upstairs I don't know if you guys can hear that lovely but anyway so she's like, oh yeah, come on in. So I went on the sound stage. There was some weird creature, like that guy with a lion face sitting behind him. And like some chick, like she was kind of a sexy chick, but she looked all alien, like walking around. And I remember using the word styling because I was like so not hip back then. That was like the one time I used it because <laughs> I saw her. And we just talk, talk and he's like, hi, Jennifer, how are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm fine. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, I just wanted to tell you that your movie, Star Wars, not that they were just his movies, your movies got me through a lot of crap when I was a kid, you know, because I had a lot of stress going on and all this other kind of stuff. Um, and he was just really nice, but you'd tell they were really antsy. It's like, oh, let's get back to work. And we shook hands, and he was really nice, and I left. And I thought, that's going to be the end of it, right? Because I'm not a real autography kind of person. I just, I'm like, I'd rather just talk to them and say hi, or just keep watching their movies. I'm not really about that. But Mark Hamill was a dude from my childhood, so of course I wanted to meet him. So anyway, like about two days later, I think it might have been on a Friday. So the next Monday, I came into work. And Wing Commander had wrapped, so they were out of the they were out of the studio. Um, but anyway, somebody comes in. I don't think it was the same girl, and they go, "Oh, this was left for you in the production office." And it just basically it had this sticky note here, which I've kept. It's circa 1995. Doesn't that look like a 1995 sticky note? And it says, "Jennifer, receptionist, Renmar." And she's like, "You're the only Jennifer here, so I guess this is for you." And he writes for Jennifer Hart. Oh, he writes the arrow opposite the way I would write it. <laughs> um, love and warm wishes, Mark Hamill. So that's my Mark Hamill autograph story. It was really awesome. Um, and I just want to share that with you guys because, I don't know, I consider my channel kind of like sci-fi, sci-reality because I feel like the Mandela effect is sci-fi, sci-reality. So anyway, I just want to share that with you. I thought it was such a cool story. And when you're cleaning your apartment to redo things, you it brings back a lot of memories. Um, anyway, that's about all. I'm happy that I'm having a little bit more free time to do videos for you guys. And more to come, uh, hopefully soon. And I guess that's about all. Peace out.